What's going on kids? It is Dr. Remy LeBeau and I'm coming at you once again from the x to provide you my super deep and insightful reaction to the latest episode of The Gifted. This was The Gifted Season 2, Episode 4. And I'll admit it, I really liked this episode. I thought it was great as far as uh, pacing, as far as what was going on within it, the drama, um, a lot of sort of the revelations of the characters. Starting with Kate Strucker, the mother, we had that opening sequence with her back when she was pregnant with Andy and apparently she was having some complications and she was she was informed that she should terminate the pregnancy and yet she was willing to move forward with it even though her life would be potentially uh, sacrificed as a result. Uh, very clearly establishing like the connection she has with her son and like the lengths to which she's willing to go to save her son. And then we flash to the present, and of course we've got this sort of evolution of the storyline that started a few episodes ago with this information that was gotten from this hacker, which apparently was killed. That cool hacker that they introduced a couple of episodes ago was killed by the Cuckoos. And I have to say, like, <sighs> I'm a little bit ambivalent about the way the Cuckoos are being represented. They are being represented as cold-blooded killers. That's not necessarily the way they are in the comics, but I guess it was this Xavier school that kind of influenced them to be better people. And it was Emma Frost's philosophy that kind of, you know, kind of made them to, feed, to be that sort of uh, maybe like cold-blooded killer type of mentality. And, and, and maybe this is like them before they get to the Xavier school and ultimately then reform. But they are just hardcore killers, man. They are willing to kill anybody without remorse. And it's uh, it's it's great for the show because you have these like really significant and serious villains that could cause a lot of harm, clearly, and, and are willing to go very far in order to uh, achieve their ends. But as far as the characters themselves, like, you know, it is kind of creating a, a, a very particular perspective on them for people that maybe don't understand these characters from the comics and ultimately they're just going to wind up being thought of as like cold-blooded killers uh, anyway i mean just a quick side note i'm sure the show if it continues on if they get a chance to continue it on for several seasons i'm sure we're going to have some really interesting arcs because esme was expressing some some hesitation about th the behavior of the inner circle in the last episode so i'm sure there's going to be some division there amongst the the um the cuckoos and maybe even as may will join the the um the mutant underground eventually the pseudo x-men of the show i don't know but we'll see what happens nonetheless like they are cold-blooded killers and they and they made that hacker kill himself he's a mutant but i mean obviously uh reva is down to kill mutants because she wants to accomplish her goal which is i don't know to start a mutant nation but make it within the u.s um, and so she's willing to go as far as necessary for that, including killing other mutants for it, which, you know, is a mixed bag for me. I don't, I don't necessarily love the idea, but you know, it does, it does, it does create like a really serious threat with respect to, you know, the inner circle, the hellfire club, as it should, as they should be, I, I, that's the way they should be represented. They should be represented as this like ruthless threat that is willing to kill for, you know, Ultimately, mutant liberation, but really mutant domination, I think, is what they lo they're looking for. They're looking for mutants to be the dominant species on the planet and, and for humans to be subordinate to them. So it, it does work. Um, and, and the threat is real for me. Like, I, I accept the threat. I accept the severity of their, of their, uh, of their conviction to their cause. I, I, I accept it. Uh, but it is a little bit... Uh, it, it's... it's it's, I don't know, it's just like, you, you, you always want the, the, like, you always want all the mutants to be together and for them to be work. I guess I'm always, I'm all about Xavier's dream, you know, like, mutants and humans living in, in peace and, and mutants and mutants living in peace. But, I mean, clearly, like, circumstances don't always allow for that. And I understand why there would be, obviously, mutants that would be a little bit more militant. Still, it, it's always a little bit jarring to kind of process it. Nonetheless, um, 
so we 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 find out that this hacker was killed, and then the uh, his brother apparently is now like also a hacker. Uh, not a now, as though it, it it changed, but he we are revealed on the show to to know that that his brother is a hacker, and that the the um, the Struckers are are looking to uh, help get get his help in order to find their children. Obviously. Uh, as we know, uh, Kate Strucker is very much uh, just militantly in her own cause, wanting to find her her son and make sure that he's safe and reunite her family. And she clearly is willing to go pretty far for that. So she concocted this whole scheme of like getting him on those drugs. Uh, well, first, first injecting him with something that would make him come down from the high that he was already on. And then to get him on and then to provide him the incentive of getting on this other very potent drug to get him high again in order for her to, for, to get the guy to help them. And it worked and ultimately it led to him having a heart attack, which I really like. I really like what that is implying about Kate Strucker. Cause I was, I was a little bit down on Kate Strucker earlier in the season. Like, Oh, well, she's like the only human character. She's not that interesting, but like, if she's going all Sarah Connor on us, then then I'm down for that. I love me a strong, like militant female who's like willing to, you know, go pretty far to achieve her her ends, which are ultimately driven by her motherly instincts. You know, and I love that because Ripley had that in Aliens, right? Like when she was when she was protecting Newt, <clears throat> and and Sarah Connor clearly had that when she was trying to protect her son. Like those are characters that are powerful and they resonate strongly and usually transcend, you know, the the medium and the story that they exist in to become legendary characters, and so those qualities are great, and I I, I like that they're sort of giving that to her uh, to Kate because, I mean her 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 son is has gone rogue her daughter is a mutant her her husband's now a mutant so she she I think is finally processing like. Well, I need to build up my own strength, the strength of a human being, the strength that a human can muster in the face of these kind of circumstances. And that is just to to be aggressive in in my attempts to uh, try to achieve my ends, you know, and I, and I respect that. I respect that the writers are giving her that sort of quality. And I, and I look forward to seeing where it goes. Um, I, it was clearly very jarring for her to find out at the very end. And she had, she didn't process it yet. But for her to find out that Andy was the one that attacked his sister, his own sister, Lauren, which I think that's going to tear her apart. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen there. And, and and thus, I am excited about the character now. And I like that she's part of the show. I like that she's part of this ensemble. Anyway, as far as what was going on, like the main sort of... Um, climactic kind of sequence of the entire episode, which is what we need every episode, by the way. A couple episodes ago, it was missing. In fact, so so that <laughs> I kind of felt as I was watching this that this moment, I think this moment should have happened at the beginning of the season, and then we should have started learning about the inner circle and like and like Reva's influence over Andy and the reasons why Andy is willing to... to, uh, to uh, give himself over to them versus, you know, now it's like, we kind of already ha saw all that and it, it was a little bit slow and it didn't like, not the last episode, but the episode before that, it was a little bit slow. And I felt, I feel like that would have resonated better if that had happened after this episode, because we would have seen this like conflict that, that, that would have erupted between siblings. And then we would have questioned like, well, how, how could this be happening? You know, like they clearly have a strong bond. What could be ha how could the what could be driving this? And then, you know, kind of go into, okay, Reva's this fucking powerful ass mutant with a lot of influence and she's a severe threat. And even though L Andy's willing to be loyal, I know that he's fucking scared out of his mind and he's willing to follow because he knows that it's likely that she'll fucking kill him if he does not um if he does not uh succumb to, to her to, to, to their wishes. Um, and clearly this, the, the cuckoos will, will do it, you know, and maybe even kill the, the Strucker family if he doesn't, um, if he doesn't, uh, submit to them. So 
Anyway, that would have been interesting, but nonetheless, I like that it happened in this episode. I, I, I'm interested in what happened in this hospital. So, it, with the help of this hacker, like, the underground was able to find out about this plan that was already going down. The, the mutants get there, they confront their old allies. We see um, Thunderbird and Blink confronting Polaris. And you think, I've, I mean, there's a sign that Polaris is going to be somewhat empathetic towards them. And then she opens up the doors and it seems as though she's going to attack. But I think it was more about like revealing to them that this place is experimenting on mutants. I didn't quite get why the mutants were killing each other, though. Was that because of the cuckoos? That didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't register that. Maybe one of you can comment and let me know what exactly was causing that, or maybe we just don't know why they were killing each other. Um, nonetheless, it it became clear at the end that the that the inner circle was looking for someone in particular, and this person was like wrapped in a sheet. Could it be Destiny? Destiny was able to see the future in the comics. She was an ally of Mystique's back when Mystique. Um, like kind of ran, I think it was the Brotherhood of Evil, of Evil Mutants, but that might just be the version from the comics, uh, from the cartoon. Um, but she, you know, that was when Rogue was under her control, essentially, under her influence. And Rogue was a bad, a villain, right? Like that's back when Mystique made Rogue absorb all of Ca Carol Danvers' powers. Carol Danvers is now going to be in the movie Captain Marvel. Like, that's how Rogue got her super strength and her flying abilities by absorbing Carol Danvers' powers. That's why she was able to do that in the cartoon in the in the '90s. I, I've read some stuff about people wanting that to happen in the movies, and I'm very excited for that possibility. I hope they don't have a little girl Rogue. I hope they actually have a, you know, like at least like a twenty-something year old Rogue that um, that maybe goes to this whole story arc of her. You know, absorbing Miss Marvel's powers and Miss Marvel having to go into a coma as a result of it, and then Miss Marvel missing for a couple of years. You know, like I hope they do that whole fucking thing because I think it would be fantastic. Anyway, like the so Destiny was part of that look that cohort that that um that Mystique had had developed, and so the question is like, is that what we're getting here? But I mean, that's that's just a long shot. Who knows what we're getting? But hopefully, it's someone important. You know, like. I think the show really needs a little bit of familiarity for the general audience. Like they need a character that the general audience can be like, shit, I know that fucking X-Men. I know that X-Men character. I know, I know this person, not from the comics, not from the cartoons, but from like the movies, you know, this is one of the main fucking characters. They need something like that. I think to really hook people that are just like casual viewers. Cause any casual viewer watches this show right now, not having seen the entire first season and and the episodes from this season and they're not going to want to keep watching i i doubt they're going to want to keep watching because it's already kind of like involved you know and so i think the show really kind of needs like that element of familiarity of like some really powerful and well-known at least one character that kind of links the show to like the things that they would know anyway so i'm hoping that this character is that uh, but I'm excited to find out what this character is. I hope it's not a brand new character. I hope it's something, again, familiar. And it doesn't necessarily have to be what I just mentioned. For me as a fanboy, I, I, a fan person, not to be patriarchal about it. For me as a fan person, I would, I would be down with any kind of familiar canon character. Um, but not ridiculously obscure like Reva, who, who showed up in one comic, you know? Or like Erg, who is the head of the Morlocks, but he's not really the head of the Morlocks because Callisto is the head of the Morlocks. So anyway, there's the other story with Jay something, the Sentinels guy. He's getting lured into the purifiers and that's exciting because the purifiers, they have been, they were mentioned last season, but they weren't really explored. And the purifiers can be a very scary element because they're religious zealots. Like they're driven by their, by their ideology, which transcends logic. And so that's why they want to kill mutants. William Stryker was responsible for the, the, them in the comics. William Stryker in the films was not. So are we going to see a religious zealot William Stryker? That's the head of the purifiers? Maybe. Is Jace going to join the, the purifiers? Maybe. I like the conflict, though. I like what he said to the guy about, um, well, I'm not really down for, like, secret societies and robes because that's, like, 
that's obviously a reference to the Ku Klux Klan. And he understands that, like, like he has his own history. Like, African Americans have their own history of being persecuted in this country. And so, and so he knows that, like, even though he, he wants to control, he wants to get the mutant problem under control, like, he doesn't want to go to the lengths that, like, the Ku Klux Klan did with respect to African Americans and trying to basically just exterminate them. Like, he doesn't want to cross that line because that's not the sort of person he is. But I have a feeling, like, like it, through the exploration of the world of the purifiers with his character, like, we're going to get some really interesting, like, moments with him where, you know, maybe he he will question the integrity of his principles in 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 relation to his you know, this cause that's driving him, which is like the pain of having lost his daughter and needing to somehow rectify that by, I don't know, taking down powerful mutants. Um, so that, I'm, I'm excited about where that was going. At first, I was a little bit iffy about that, his character story, because I didn't know where it was going. But clearly, he's going to be the doorway, the window into the purifier's world as now we're seeing, you know, some of the underground being the doorway, the, the, the window into the the Morlock world, and then we're seeing Lorna and um, Andy being kind of the window into the Inner Circle world. So they're building up a lot of really interesting elements that are definitely part of canon, and and they're doing it in an interesting way. I'm li I like the season so far. I'm not gonna lie. Like so far, I'm liking it. It does feel a lot like last season as far as like the rhythm, uh, because it did last season did have like kind of a slow slow parts and then like really exciting big parts and but ultimately where it all converged to was great and that's why i was waiting you know uh for the second season to start and i was i was highly anticipating it i'm sure a lot of people were as well so so this episode and the last couple really bode well for the season i look forward to seeing where it's going to go i hope the season is 13 episodes like for season one and um and yeah, um, let's let's see what happens next week. We'll, we'll have a little discussion about it as well next week. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you haven't already done so, click that little button under the screen, subscribe. It'll help you keep up with my latest videos. And as always, I want to remind you folks that if you haven't already, you better put an X in that box because ain't nobody checking me. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.